everyone to today's learning session. At the beginning of this learning session, we looked at what modeling is and classified and looked at the classification of models according to Gupta and Hira. We proceeded further to conceptualizing and operationalizing our models based on simple and multiple regression models. And today, we'll be looking at correlation models. I welcome you all to today's session. And as our practice is, we would start with a word of admonition and prayers. Our bedrock for success today will be taken from the book of Proverbs 22, verse 29. It says, Seest thou a man diligent in his business? He shall stand before kings, he shall not stand before mean men. Today, I want to encourage my listeners and everyone watching to let the act of diligence and hard work. In as much as God is willing to crown our effort, in our previous session, we established the fact that except God builds the house, the labor in vain that built it. But no matter how God blesses our effort, without a due diligence on our part, true success will also not be recorded. So for you to be successful in this coursework, for you to be successful in your business, for you to be successful in life endeavors, there is the place of diligence. There is the place of hard work. There is the place of assiduous effort. And I want to encourage everyone, do not be a lazy student. God bless you as you continue this session with us. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, once again, we have been reminded that one of the important bedrock for success is diligence. In Proverbs 22 verse 29, you reminded us that seest thou a man diligent in his business, he will stand before kings, he will not stand before mean men. I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice, including myself, that the grace to put in the necessary effort that will bring us good success, grant unto every one of us. See us through the session we have for today and bless everyone under the sound of my voice. Grant us an understanding mind. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Once again, you're welcome to today's session. I remain a most Benita by name. I will be looking at correlation models. In our previous session, we were able to establish that the regression models establishes the cost and effect relationship, how one thing affects another. But when we talk about correlation models, correlation models is the model that establishes the strength of the relationship. It gives us the direction of the relationship. It mean, it doesn't tell you that it doesn't tell you how one variable affects the affects the other because it is not a cause and effect model. So when you want to study about a cause and effect relationship, one of the tools that can be used is the regression model. But when you want to know the direction and the strength of the relationship. Of course, the correlation model is one model that can be recommended. Aside that, in your regression model, at least one of the variables of interest must be a dependent variable, meaning I can examine the relationship or how the independent variable, how one independent variable affects one dependent variable or how multiple independent variables affect one dependent variable. But for correlation models, none of the variable needs to be dependent. So I can actually examine the relationship that exists between multiple independent variables multiple dependent variables and a dependent and an independent variable or a dependent and many independent variables as the case may be. So as against the drop back of a regression model where at least one of the variables must be dependent for a correlation model, it needs not be that way. So what exactly is a correlation analysis or a correlation model? Correlation analysis is concerned 
with a study of the degree and direction of relationship between two or more variables. Of course, it reveals the relationship and the strength of the relationship between two variables or more than two variables, which can be a dependent and an independent, a dependent and many independents. It can be examining the relationship between multiple independent variables. Now we're going to look at in, in what ways variables can be connected. The very first relationship we'll look at is the positively related variables. When we say two variables are positively connected or positively related, what do we mean? It simply means that an increase in one variable is leading to an increase in another variable or a decrease in one variable is leading to a decrease in another variable. In other words, the two variables are moving in the same direction simultaneously. But when we talk about a negatively, a negatively related variable, it simply means the two variables of interest are moving in an inverse direction. One is moving in a positive way and the second is moving in a negative way, meaning they are inversely related. As one goes up, the other comes down and vice versa. So in a positively related variable, the slope moves upward from your left to your right, as we would see. And in a negatively related variable, the slope moves downward, as we would see in our subsequent study. For a non-monotonic variable or a non-monotonic relationship, this is when the values of two variables are positively related within a certain range of values and negatively related within a range of values. That is, they are positively related to some extent, the two are moving in the same direction, and at the end, the two begins to move in a negative direction. I give an illustration of a positively related variable moving in the same direction. The law of supply curve, in the law of supply in economics, is one of the laws that, are, that shows a positive relationship. What do I mean? The law of supply states that ceteris paribus, the higher the price, the higher the quantity of goods supplied. The lower the price, the lower the quantity of goods supplied. All of that things being equal. There are exceptions, of course, to this rule. But you see that book price and quantity supply are moving in the same direction. That's a positively related variable. On the other hand, the law of demand is a negatively related variable. As one moves upward, the other moves downward. The higher the price, the lower the quantity of goods demanded and vice versa. Now for a non-monotonic uh, relationship, we can look at the law of um, diminishing marginal utility. You know, the more of goods a person consumes at the beginning, the increase in satisfaction the person derives. But as a person continues to consume such goods, there begins to be a decrease in the satisfaction level. So it is positively related to some point, and then the negative part sets in. Then we have the uncorrelated, or we call it the zero relationship variable. That is, there is no relationship at all between the two variables of interest and the coefficient of relationship, the coefficient of correlation is always zero at this point. I want us to think about real life situation. Of course, if we look at the student setting, there's actually no relationship between the height of a student and his GP level. We have seen very tall students with a very small GP. And we have seen very small students with a very good GP. And so we see that there's actually no relationship between the size, the height of a student and their GP. We also see that there is actually no relationship between the IQ of an individual and the size of the head. The bigger your head, 
does not imply that your IQ level will be high. And so we can see that it, we can say that a zero correlation or a no relationship exists between the IQ level of an individual and the size of the head of an individual. One thing that is used to illustrate this is what we refer to as the scatter diagram that shows you the relationship between variables. I have some example here and we are going to look at it together. Now, let's take a look at the very first diagram. This is a diagram that shows us a perfect positive relationship. We can see that as one of the variable on this side is rising, the variable on the other side is also rising. And this is our perfect supply curve. And when we have a perfect curve of this nature, the correlation coefficient is a perfect positive norm plus one for a perfectly positive relationship. We go to a perfect negative correlation or a perfect negative relationship, and we see that as the first variable is rising, the second variable is dropping and vice versa. And for a perfect negative relationship, the coefficient of correlation is a negative one. There are still some other scatter diagram that shows relationship existing between models. Let's take a look at this. For this relationship, it tells us that there is a strong positive relationship, but it is not perfect. In the center, you could see that there are several, there are multiple lines, but they are all moving in the same upward slope. And that is why the coefficient of correlation is always greater than 0.7, but less than 1. So when we have a strong positive relationship, we have a, relationship, a correlation coefficient that ranges between 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 0 0.95, but it is always less than 1. Then for a, for a high negative relationship, we have a situation where the slope are all moving downwards. But it is not a perfect slope. It is not a single slope. So it shows that on the negative side, it is high. The correlation coefficient in this case is always minus 0 0.8 and above. And it is always also less than minus 1. We move on and we look at um, some weekly positive weekly negative relationship and the zero correlation now let's take a look at these diagrams for this it is weak in the sense that we see that the coefficient the, the 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 direction is also moving upward but not in a in an organized direction and so the correlation coefficient for this for weekly positive ranges between 0 0.1, 0 0.2, up to 0 0.4. So when it is very weak, it ranges from 0 0.1 to 0 0.4. It becomes moderate at 0 0.5, 0 0.6, and moderately strong at 0 0.7. For the negative, it is also moving in a downward slope, but not in an organized pattern. And the relationship that exists, the correlation coefficient, also ranges from minus 0 0.1 to minus 0 0.4. It is a big negative relationship. And for the zero correlation, we see a situation where there are no exact pattern. This has a pattern, even though it's weak. It has a pattern, even though it's weak. But this has no pattern at all. It has no direction. The scatter diagram has no exact pattern. We say that um, a zero relationship exists in a diagram of such nature. And straight up, we are looking at what, how to interpret a correlation coefficient value. We are going to look at how to use piercing product moment correlation and how to use the sperma rank correlation coefficient. In our next class, we are going to compare these results.
Thank you for listening. God bless you. We will see in our next session. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this class. Our prayer is that even as we have introduced the correlation um, model, that your, the, your children listening and watching will understand these things and be able to apply them as it is needed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.